Hi everyone and welcome to Asami Rat Kit. So the second video I'm going to be filming today, um, and this is actually for my breeding series. So this is going to look about at how I choose kittens. So that's um, how I choose my keepers. Um, obviously all the kittens are still perfectly kind of wonderful kittens, but as a breeder, what I need to do is make sure I choose um, really good breeding rats for the next generation. And I'm going to focus here on looking at physical type and that side of thing. Um, I'll probably look at a different one some of the time, talk, talking about how I assess temperament in a longer, a longer kind of term thing. There's just so many things to bear in mind. Sorry, I've now got hiccups. Um, so many things to bear in mind when you're choosing, <laughs> um, choosing kittens. But it's easier to break it down into bits. And I tend to do my assessments kind of one bit at a time. So I'll focus... I don't know why somebody is squ squeaking in my main group. Um, I tend to focus on doing an assessment on one attribute, then I'll assess a different attri attribute at a different time, and then combine that in my mind and choose my keepers from there. So we'll look at type. So what is type? Let's grab a baby to help with this. Type is basically physical conformation. So physical conformation is their kind of muscle, their bone structure, their kind of eye size. Generally, um, their kind of physical shape and structure. And the reason this is so important from a breeding point of view in your kind of future keepers is they that will then be your choices to continue the next generation. And I will say, it's not um, perfect. You're not going to be able to um, get it right all the time. The number of times that breeders have given away the best rat in their litter is probably higher than the number of times they've kept the best rats. Um, but you should give yourself a kind of good broad um, understanding to go from. So um, in this case, what I'm going to be doing, and the reason I didn't do it last time was I didn't have very many rats to take you through and kind of talk about. I only had five and they were very similar um, rats then. So what I can do with this is take you through with a bit more information um, with 13 <laughs> rats. So these are 13 girls that me and um, Lisa will be choosing from shortly. So first of all, I want to, want to talk about when to choose. So the important thing when you're choosing is to not choose too young. It's very tempting as these babies kind of, first of all, are born, and then they get the colours and the markings through and they look beautiful. And then they get that really cute three week stage and then somebody licks you first of all. And that's it. I want to keep that one. I want to keep that colour one because I really want to write that colour. But that is not generally the best time to choose. The best time to choose is typically around about five, six, maybe seven weeks old. Um, because at that age, the rats will give a better representative of what they're going to end up like when they're bigger and um, you want to consider a lot of options you don't want to just be deciding based off um, who licks you the most or who has the prettiest head spot or that kind of thing yes if you're breeding for that you want to take into account the head spot and temperament if it's a really licky rat that is also quite an important thing though it's not the only way of differentiating kind of good tempered rats um, but we need to be thinking about a bit more than that um, as breeders. We need to be looking at the whole rat and all the different aspects of it, not deciding on a whim or like just entirely going, I want that rat, that rat's the cutest. Um, whilst you are, you can, and I will encourage people to occasionally keep that heart choice, um, you do need to pick with your head as well. So I'm going to talk a little bit about what I'm looking at when I'm trying to assess a rat for type. So you're starting with 13, they're all kind of like mental, they're all different. Um, in some cases they might all actually be the, the same variety. I did have a litter of 13 agoutis once, that was fun. Um, but what you've got to do is start somewhere and that's really important. Don't get daunted by the numbers, but start somewhere. So the first thing I always do when um, picking is I will get them all out, have a bit of a kind of hands on everybody and I will decide who I'm going to eliminate. So by eliminate, that doesn't mean that they're immediately going to go in the bin. Far too cute for that, aren't you? Um, it just means that they're really not breeding prospects. So I couldn't breed from them um, or I'm very unlikely to. So the first rat that I would be eliminating is this little girl. Now there's nothing wrong with this little girl. She's gorgeous. She's very friendly. She's a um, beautiful little lady. But for perspective, this is one of her sisters. So straight away, um, you can see that she's quite small. Now, when I'm feeling her, and one thing I always make sure I do is have kind of like fingers around the chest. This gives you an idea of the shoulder muscles and the chest muscles and the general build. She feels very lightweight and, and she is lightweight. She's, she's quite small. She was one of the smallest in the litter. And that doesn't automatically eliminate a rat. But in this case, I've got such a wide range of choices. 
and actually the ch other choices are so much nicer that um, she's not going to be in the running because what she needs is to be an adorable pet for somebody um, and they will absolutely love her kind of gorgeous little temperament, her um, kind of sweet nature and she'd be perfectly happy like that. In fact, probably get more attention than she would being kept as a breeding rat. So it's nothing kind of negative, but she's just not suitable in this case. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take her off the table, <laughs> my large table of kittens, and I'm going to put her in a little cage. So that basically means I don't have to look at her again. I don't have to try and keep track of who I've looked at. Once I've looked at them and decided whether I'm going to eliminate them or I've assessed them, then I'm going to put them away. So she's going in the mini cage, right. Next one. I know there are two black rats here, you're a dumbo. So I find it easier to then go through and basically um, pick up, actually I think there's three black rats, I'm trying to remember how many kittens we have in each variety. I find it easiest to go through and kind of pick a variety um, and look at all the rats from that variety. This would be a lot easier if I had a less interesting free range area. Yes, you are all very, very cute. You're an Essex. Right, so I think I've got them here. So, two black rats. Um, so straight away, again, like the little Essex girl that um, I've eliminated, I'm going to eliminate her. She feels, again, much lighter. Um, you might be able to see it if I kind of put them side, side by side. Um, it doesn't always come across particularly well in kind of camera, but she is much lighter. The other thing that's quite important with her is if you look here, she's got what we call a tail kink. Now that is just basically a birth defect. It happens along the tail, it happens at various different points in there. A tail kink alone should not necessarily always eliminate a rat. Um, you can have a fantastic rat with a very tiny tail kink right near the tip. This is quite a big tail kink if I'm honest. Um, it's blindingly obvious. Um, I have kept the odd rat with a very minor tail kink, but it's something that does definitely count against them. And you should only be really thinking about that if the rat is exceptional in all other ways. She's quite lightweight. Um, she's got this quite big kink. So straight away then she's going into the elimination kind of cage and you get extra meal in there. They like it in there. <laughs> right, so she pops in. So I've now got one black rat. There is also, where is she? They're currently having a bit of a fight over food. Look, there's enough to go around. Come in, miss. Yes, yes, I want you. There's also a black Dumbo, so I'm going to choose to assess these together because it's easier to assess two together and then I can think about um, what we want to do. So now what I'm going to do is think a little bit about our aims. Um, our aims, you see, are we want to get well, out of this particular litter, which was black and black, black Essex, born over at Lovecraft, but we want to get black out of there. Essex is beautiful, um, but actually, whilst I'll do a quick assessment, because we can still use the black Essex skills, and I should explain, grab a random rat. This is black Essex, <laughs> this is black. So um, the black Essex obviously is a black rat, it's just got markings as well. And that's not the end of the world. We had to use the dad that was a black Essex because, oh, she's licking me. Yes, I do love you. She knows that I'm picky. She's trying to win me over. <laughs> um, yes, so we know we knew when we were using the dad that we get Essex in a litter. We did it because he was the best available black rat that would mate with our does. Um, his brother did not think does were for mating, just sniffing and then hiding from because he was a wimp. But yes, so there's Essex in itself can be could be useful for us in the future, and I will do an assessment on them. But actually the black rats are going to be more useful for us because that's what we're actually breeding for. And if you kind of add in too much Essex, it can give them more white feet and such, um, which isn't ideal um, when you're trying to breed for self rats, which these are. But if the best rat was an Essex that was a black rat, then we potentially keep it um, regardless and then move on from that. Because, um, and it's one of my rules of, th of thumb um, when picking rats, you want to I'll just remove some of don't destroy my plant. Don't leave, don't leave plants on free range area with babies, they enjoy it too much. Um, but yes, so um, i trying to think where we are. Yeah, so one of my primary things to think about, and it's a phrase that um, a really experienced breeder told me when I started out was, you want to paint your barn before you, oh, sorry, you want to build your barn before you paint it. So that refers to you want to build, build your rat's body, you want to make sure they've got really good solid type before you worry too much about the colour, the marking, etc. Whilst they still come into things and are still important, for me they're less important than the physical type, which is why I do this kind of type assessment. Um, 
Right, so we've got our two black rats here, little Dumbo and a little Top Ear. Um, for us, both of them are equally useful. We like both black Dumbos and black Top Ears. Um, so I'm not really going to consider anything on that. So straight away in my hands, whilst it's not obvious on kind of camera because they're quite close, and um, the little Dumbo does not have quite as good kind of muscle tone and, and kind of, she doesn't feel quite as solid in my hand as this girl. Um, now, there's not necessarily anything wrong with her. She's still, I would say, a candidate but she's not quite as good as her in terms of type. Next thing I'm looking at, and I'll try and move out of the way because against a pale backdrop, is I try and look at the heads in silhouette. So what I'm looking for there is like a good shape over the head. Um, so in an ideal world, and these are a little young to properly have the head shape, um, and about six weeks, they'll show it off a little bit better. But what we want is a kind of like, I'm trying to think where I can get this in silhouette against a uh, cunning plan. So this kind of shows this, the kind of silhouette effect of the head. Um, if I grab a pen, so when we're trying to assess head shape, the kind of thing we're looking at, and um, we shall have, ah, don't sniff in my ear, that's really uncomfortable. Um, don't mind me, impromptu sketching se session. So one of the things we're looking for is this kind of shape here. So where it kind of, goes over an angle over the eyes and that's what we call the nose break or sometimes um, we have different eyebrow kind of eyebrow ridge that kind of thing um, when we're looking at that we i'm looking for a bit of shape there now babies do tend to have flatter heads than not um, but as they grow this will become more pronounced um, what i also look at is again i want to look at the heads poor babies they're being very tolerant here i want to look at the shape here as well so i want to make sure they've got a decent amount of muzzle um, um, and decent kind of like shape around the cheekbones. What I don't want is to see a perfect triangle. Um, she shows it quite well. Let's see whether I can go and pop down again. Which will we have to catch her? Um, that probably reflects flex it a little bit better. But we want to see like a nice muzzle. Um, you don't want a too triangular rat, so you don't want a rat with like, no muzzle that I'll squish her face in a bit. That literally just looks like a perfect triangle. Um, you want that kind of shape, and I will do a little bit of doodling again. Sorry, rats. The babies don't understand. They all want to play with me. Um, you'll have to kind of, kind of put up with this. So this is a very simple shape, and and it's it's exaggerated to try and show it quite clearly. But we want a nice kind of muzzle area to the kind of pointed nose, some cheekbones to the width, so the eyes would go kind of like this kind of area and ears both that but we want that kind of shape in there i don't want what i would term as a plain head and i will say again as the babies get older it will become more pronounced at this stage they're in the baby fluff baby fluff hides a lot of features so sometimes you actually have to feel and you can feel nice cheekbones you can feel nice bone structure and so on so that's kind of like around the head area what i'm looking at um, i will also want to look at their eyes so um what we have here is a girl with really nice eyes in fact, to be fair, all these kittens have very nice eyes. These two have a bit of a difference. Let me grab them. So, so you can see on these two that this girl here has better eyes than this girl here. Um, when we're looking for eyes, we're looking for nice... Oh, don't... Oh, sorry. One of the babies took a wonder. <laughs> um, yeah, so when we're looking at eyes, we want nice big eye size. Um, nice round, round in proportion with the head. Now, the reason her eyes look slightly smaller is because actually her head's slightly bigger. She's a bit more of a chunky rat. Um, this girl is a bit more petite and um, and kind of like quite lightweight. So out of the two, um, I would probably still go for her, even though her eyes look really fantastic and poppy. Um, she's just a bit of a chunk. Aren't you missing a few chunk? Um, but yeah, there's also a big difference in body kind of length here as well. And that's one to bear in mind. What you want to pick is a rat with a nice long body type, um, nice long tail too. Um, if you don't focus too much on that, you get rats get very small and stocky, and that isn't good for them. They're not as fit and agile like that way. Um, so that's one to bear in mind there. Now, every time I'm assessing a rat, I need to make sure that I'm also checking for these tail kinks that I spoke about. Um, physically, kind of give them a good feel over, um, have a good look at them. She has, for instance, fantastic Dumbo ears. And if you're a Dumbo breeder, this comes into account. Let's see if we can find that. See if they're okay. One of them has, uh, there she is. Um, this little girl here has quite 
rubbish done by this. Um, not only do they kind of come to a point up here, but they're quite wavy. If you can see, you can see quite a clear crease on this. Um, it probably won't show up particularly well on videos. You can see it against my head, that's a bit easier. But she has got a slight wibble on her ears. Whereas if I look at hers, they are lovely, very smooth. And there's no creases on there, very big not really particularly pointed. Ideally a dumbbell ear should be lovely round and kind of nice shaped. So we're looking at that kind of thing in here. So from that I will literally take every single kind of pair of the babies or trio, there's three Essexes, well I could look at the Dumbo separately from the rest but I, I won't do because um, in this case I, I'd like to kind of take groups of three or four, maybe five at a pinch and look at them separately. Are you fishing? I don't see any peas in there. So if we grab the Essex, I have one more Essex hiding from me. I can see you missed it, but you're having trouble. Um, this is also, I should say, easier with more than one person. <laughs> um, you kind of end up helping each other round up um, different rats. Very juicy. That bit where you're just gonna kind of get on with things and find the one later. So, of these two Essex, um, again, I'm looking at the kind of head shape, I'm having a good feel. Um, that Dumbo feels quite nice and solid. Um, kind of, both of them have actually got quite a good hand feel. They're both technically options. Um, the difference here is that... <coughs> sorry, babes. Um, we have no particular preference. Um, we don't particularly want to keep Essex. Um, so whilst I'm looking at it, I'm only really going to be... Ah, oh, there's my other Essex. It's amazing how they can vanish and then just suddenly reappear. Yeah. So while I'm going to assess that, I'm only really interested in who's the best or if there's any one that stands out for particular features. So straight away, just from hand feel, um, I'm going to say it's between those two. Um, this one's perfectly fine, but she just feels a little lightweight and is quite short body. So I'm going to pop her back. Yeah. Right, so now I have two. Um, now, generally feeling hand feel, they're pretty similar. She lacks a little bit of shoulder, so when I'm kind of holding her around her shoulder, it feels less substantial than this girl, who feels overall better muscly. But they've both got a, quite a nice hand feel. They're both very close, actually. Um, what I'll probably do is mark them down as both potential options with her being a slight favourite. However, if we want to keep a wrap for excellent Dumbo ears, they both have really nice ears actually, top ear and Dumbo, um, then it's, she could be a useful one for us to consider when we're thinking about what we want from the litter. So now those two can go back, I know what I am. What I do is keep copious notes. So this goes through who I've eliminated and why. Um, then I kind of rank them, put a little comment against them. And um, because I'm picking with a friend, it's not just me picking, then we can compare notes. And actually we'll probably have a session together where we actually fully decide. But I thought I'd do this while I've got them here. Okay. So that's two more rats down. Let's get my two blacks. Um, I think I basically did this one before, but again, just from kind of general reflection, she would probably be the kind of first choice because she's slightly less substantial, but she is very much a close contender. Um, she's she's got what might be the start of a slight wibble in one of her Dumbo ears, but her other one is perfect. But they're both really lovely rats. Um, I like both of these, but she would be my first choice and she would kind of be my second. Okay. Heads in, heads in. Right, I've next got agoutis. So I've got two agouti top ears and two agouti dumbbells. Yeah. My two agoutis. So first impressions on these is actually they're both really nice rats. Um, they both have really good kind of muscle tone, really good shoulders. She's slightly shorter bodied than her. Um, but possibly has a slightly prettier head. Um, she's got slightly more shape to it. Um, slightly kind of more bonny. Um, there's not much in it though. Um, one thing I will say with her is she looks prettier because she's kind of more delicate featured. Um, what I think is she may end up a little bit narrow headed as an adult, um, but she is really pretty. So she's got really good shape. So what I'll probably do with these is I'll mark them both down as options and then we'll choose like literally just before we kind of home them. 
um, or we might choose based off temperament um, because they are so so blooming close but they are very nice rats and probably currently the nicest in the litters yes yes that's my back though i haven't properly looked at the agouti dumbos on my bus yet so i should say all the agouti rats are from the same litter so we'll be looking to keep at least one doe maybe two does from that litter um and they'll probably only keep one doe from my kind of topaz and buff litter because there's only two does <laughs> And then we'll keep one or two does between us from the other litter. Um, probably two, I would have thought. Heads in. Right, who's next? Let's do our other agoutis. We've got you. Yes, you. You're right. It gets easier as there's less rats to catch. So, two dumbos. Right, so straight away again, this has become quite easy. She is much more lightweight. Um, she just doesn't have that kind of shoulder and actually she's got quite a short body too which you can physically see from me holding them um so straight away i kind of favor this girl who is quite chunky and solid um ear wise she's got some quite quite kind of wavy slightly creased ears hers are not perfect by any means but she's quite a nice rat um she is quite bonny so it's quite a clear one for me that she's the nicer of the two here right so let's pop them back Good rats. Right, so my final two are actually my babies, um, so I'll definitely be keeping one of these. So straight away in the hand, um, she feels slightly um, kind of less around her shoulder. Now she was always quite small from quite young, so I'm not surprised by that, but that does maybe make me favour her sister. So we've got the top here and the Dumbo girl here. Um, body length wise, again, you can see that the top here is quite a bit longer than the um, Dumbo, which also makes me favour her. And if we look kind of at general heads, um, come on, go in silhouette to the camera. Now she's got a nicer shape to it. Um, they're actually both still quite nice rats and both have very similar eye size, even though um, she's now squinting because we're looking at that, of course, that's what they tend to do. Um, her ears are not good though. If you have a look here, we've got quite a crease going on on that one. Um, quite a kind of almost a like, proper crease going on, on that one too. So on that basis, then, of, of the two, um, unless things change radically, I'll be keeping this little girl here. Yes, mouse girl. Um, and actually, I feel quite comfortable that that will probably stick. They're not as close as, let's say, those two agoutis who we could easily pick between the two. Um, I'm almost sure that she'll be staying. So that's a lot of them. Um, so... Can you pop? Yep, heads, tails. Right, so I've had a bit of a look through everybody now, and so I've got a good understanding of what we're going to do. Now, these at the moment are five and a half weeks. Um, I want another look, um, particularly for those two agoutis, and I also want to look with um, Lisa. I find it helps a lot to get a second opinion on these things. It's quite nice. It's quite enjoyable to do that. Um, and actually, what we quite often do with some other kind of friend, rat friends and breeders in the area is what we call kitten picking parties, where we just have a few of us around here and get opinions on the babies. And ultimately, it's still up to the person that's bred the rats and going to keep the rats um, to decide what's, what they, they want the most in that. But it's nice to get those inputs and opinions from other people. Um, and for instance, what I've done here is I've literally just looked at type. Now, Lisa's been with her litters since they've been growing up. I've only had them a couple of days. I can't properly assess temperament at this stage. Now, what I will be doing over the next few days is really getting to know those girls because they'll be staying with me and the boys are going to be heading back to Lisa so she can do that with them. Um, it's just we find it easier to do it this way. And plus, they're a lot happier growing up in the groups together. Um, in fact, they're very happy at the moment, um, constantly fighting with each other and play, playing games. Um, but that gives you an idea. Right, I'm just going to quickly grab um, a boy and tell you the kind of slight differences when we're looking at these. <coughs> hey, Trevor. I'm just waiting to see if any more boys comes out. Um, but to be fair, he's quite a good one. Right, so I've got two of the boys here. Um, they are quite different, um, kind of almost chalk and cheese here. So we've got one of my guys from um, my litter here. Well, in fact, I can get his brother if I'm quick. Might be a good thing. 
Right, I now have three boys. Uh, I've got one very slight one here. So my example of elimination rats, this is a rat I would eliminate right away. Um, he's a pretty little boy, but again, much like his, um, well, it wasn't actually his sister, um, but one of the other litters at Lovecraft, um, the little black Essex girl. Um, he's very lightweight. He's a pretty little lad um, and very sweet and obviously bold to come to the cage first or one of the first. Um, but he's definitely one that I wouldn't be considering. So he's going to stay on my shoulder of elimination since I can't put him in the cage of elimination because he'd have fun with his sisters. Right, so then we have two topazes. So it's a good example to look at these because they're both quite close in terms of brothers, but there is one who is currently clearly slightly better. Not much in it though. Um, so basically what we have here is um, kind of two quite similar boys. Hand feel wise, um, they actually feel quite similar. Um, interestingly, um, Black bum spot boy is currently feeling slightly more solid than no bum spots. Um, it's interesting, I say, because he's felt more solid for quite a few days now. Um, well, for quite a few days, quite a few weeks. He was quite a weedy little lad, but has really come into his own. Um, if I'm looking at kind of head profile, they're very, very similar rats. He has a slightly longer head. Um, and also he has a slightly... And this is quite important in books. We're looking for kind of breadth of head. Um, having a quick look here. They're posing quite nicely. Bless you. He currently has a slightly broader head. So it's a good comparison to look at this little chap. Um, books should have quite a wide head. So a doe can be quite pretty. They can get away with narrowness and not a lot more than a book. Um, this little chap, as well as being a little bit weedy, has a very, what I'd call a girly head. Um, which is very pretty and beautiful, um, but it is not what we want when we're picking um, our books. What we want is a kind of good solid head. Um, what we shouldn't mistake for though, is we shouldn't pick a head basis based on um, just what we think is a wide head, because the tendency is then to get short noses, um, because that makes the head look wider. So we need to be very careful that when we're looking at the heads, we're looking at the both kind of inside profile, which is quite a good way of kind of lining up the heads and also from a width point of view as well. But yes, so at the moment, very, very close between the, oh, that's my ear. Yes, sorry, baby eating ear. At the moment, from just looking at these two, and it could change because it has changed in the last um, half a week, I will be going for this guy, which is the kind of bum spot guy. Now, what I should also mention here is shade. So in topaz, shade can matter um in fact to be any for any variety shade matters um it should be something that you kind of bear in mind but to don't take massive kind of don't let it overrule everything so we actually have two slightly different shades here this guy may not show particularly well in camera um is slightly warmer than this guy now the reason that matters to me now is in topaz rats it is likely that rats that are slightly duller colored carry self so carry black effectively um for those that are slightly kind of brighter colored they probably don't um so it's, it's a bit of a factor to take into account with these two um now at the moment um the guy that i've actually always suspected carries self is the slightly better rat and i would probably let that r kind of win out in general um but it's one to bear in mind and actually, when you're breeding for things like a gooty, um, trying to pick rats with a bit of fire is quite important too. <coughs> but again, um, remember that kind of adage that you have to kind of build your shed before you paint it. And it's quite important that we take that into account and um, don't get too hung up on the, the exact shade. Um, though it's one factor to take into account to balance off against other factors. Um, no rats are kind of perfect. Um, so you have to kind of balance everything and decide what your best options are. Um, I should really mention something in this case as well. So whilst I've looked here on kind of pure, are uh, the amazing like t type and such, and these are my ranked types, um, it's worth also bearing in mind what their weaknesses are. Um, because when you're selecting your future keepers, what you don't want to select is rats with all the same problems. Even if you end up selecting, let's say a rat that's slightly narrow, um, but has amazing eyes when the rest of your keepers are lovely kind of chunky solid rats but don't have as a main have kind of outstanding eyes by any means 
it's it's worth picking that kind of wrap for that feature because what you can quite easily end up um, kind of in the middle of is you find yourself with a whole host of rats that are all identical and you can't improve your problems. Um, so when you're actually picking rats to mate up in the future, what you want to do is pick rats with um, the strengths you want to kind of enhance, but not with the same weaknesses. So leave your options open on this to a certain extent. Um, if you're picking two keepers and you want to pick one, oh, that's my ear. you really just like it is this one. Yeah, if, if you're picking your keepers and you've got one that's kind of fantastic, you may choose your second keeper to have some faults, but actually be better in certain other aspects of the other one. And that will then give you options when it comes to picking the does. Or if all your does have slightly small eyes, but fabulous um, muscle tone, you might pick a slightly weedier book, but with fabulous eyes or vice versa. Um, it's one of those things to bear in mind, um, as long as you kind of leave some options for other things as well. Right, I've probably talked by far enough on this subject. Um, I will do one at some point um, in terms of temperament assessments and that kind of thing and some of the things that you can do for it. But that's it in terms of type. Um, I've got a good kind of eye on out of 13, there's five rats that we're likely keeping. Um, I could rank them against each other and do kind of like a, a one through five and then do it that way. Um, if I did, those two agoutis would probably end up on top. Um, having a bit of a think probably followed by my buff and maybe um, the black girl um, but that's just a bit of a gook feel I would have to have a bit of a look at them on the day as well to do that and that would help narrow things down further um, but five keepers between two people is fine and um, you do have to do more kind of analysis when it's just you that's that's kind of having to bear this one in mind right so I think it's over and out from me and various babies <laughs> uh, bye for now